So I've spent six months with the Asus Zephyrus G14. We're gonna talk about some things that I love and some things I think you should be aware of if you're considering purchasing this laptop. Now, first and foremost, this is a fantastic, compact, thin, and light 14-inch laptop that packs a punch. It's got great performance. It's got great battery life. It is a fantastic on-the-go creator machine. But I will say that that 14-inch screen was noticeably small after a lot of use. I'm somebody who uses, on the average day, a big you know, two monitor setup. And so going from two monitors to this 14 inch screen did feel small. And you would say, okay, Ben, well then why did you choose a 14 inch laptop? And I would say, that is exactly why I'm bringing that up. If you're somebody who likes a larger screen, who is used to using more screen real estate, then this will feel small in my opinion, especially while video editing. That's where I noticed it the most because you have your effects panel, you have your project monitor panel, Panel. You have your timeline with all your different clips and effects on your timeline. And so because of the small screen, those things had to be rather small. And so it just created a less enjoyable experience for me personally, who's used to more screens. If that is not an issue to you, then disregard. But that's something I definitely wanted to bring up. Though this is thin and light, though this is compact, that screen did feel small over a long-term use. For reference, the model that I have before me is the Ryzen 9 6900HS with the RX 6700S GPU and 16 gigs of RAM. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of this model, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, the next thing to point out is that this power button on my specific model, I don't know if this is going to be common across all the models out there. Maybe it was just something that mine was experiencing. The power button felt a little sticky. This never was an issue of turning on or off the laptop, but the power button just felt a little sticky, especially if it had been a couple days since I used the laptop and went to power it up again. It just had that like stickiness and then it would give me a click. So just something I noticed, it did not affect the use of it, but it never resolved itself over the six months. It continued to feel kind of sticky. Now, the next thing I think you should be aware of is that the different fan modes inside of the Asus Armory Crate Center didn't really create that much different in the actual performance inside of an application. So for instance, with video editing, let's say you're exporting a 4K clip out of Premiere Pro, whether you're on silent mode, performance mode, or turbo mode, you did not see a massive difference between those different modes. Now, this is great for say silent mode, but then when you flip it up to turbo mode, you wanna get that you know beefy raw performance and you have a super fast export time you know, for the fan noise and for the thermals that you're getting, but it didn't. So you might as well just run the laptop on silent mode. But again, if you're running on silent mode, why does performance and turbo mode exist if they don't give you that much more benefit? So that was an area I was disappointed in. Although I do have quiet fan noise and better thermals on silent mode, I would have wanted to kind of max out my CPU and GPU on turbo mode to get more performance. And I just didn't see as much of a performance peak as I had hoped when I scaled up to that mode inside of Armory Crate. Now going along that same vein, let's get into what I love about this laptop and that is quiet fans. Okay, so the thermals do hover around the high 80s and even low 90s, but the fans are quiet on this laptop, especially for a gaming laptop. I never saw above 48 decibels of fan noise on turbo mode, and on silent mode, I would often see around the 40 decibel or lower range for this laptop, whether in Premiere Pro, whether while doing 3D modeling or video editing. So I love how quiet this laptop is, and the thermals do remain fairly cool. They're not the coolest temperatures. In fact, I talked about that in my reviews previously, that last year's model was actually running cool cooler than this year's model, but they've packed a lot more performance into this model. They've given us a higher wattage GPU. And so it's expected that this laptop is going to get warmer. And with that new thermal chamber, they have been able to suppress a lot of those hot temperatures, but because there's so much power going through this laptop, they weren't able to keep it as cool as the last year's model with the 5900HS. Now that leads me into performance. I've been able to benchmark this laptop up against other computers since I first reviewed this laptop. This is one of the first Ryzen 6000 series laptops and even before I even got a lot of 12th gen Intel in. So now we're gonna check out the benchmarks compared to other models that have come along since I reviewed this laptop to see if it still stands up to the test. Now, before we get into my favorite thing about this laptop after six months, make sure you subscribe right now. Go ahead, take the two seconds to click that subscribe button. We're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by Christmas and you could make that happen. Thank you so much if you would just take that little effort, do that and make some dreams come true here and help us reach 100,000 subscribers. So be amazing. 
It is one of the best performing laptops of the year and you can often find it on sale on bestbuy.com for about $1,300. I would definitely recommend checking out the live pricing in the description below this video. And if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. The performance of this thing is insane. As you've been seeing on the simulated benchmarks, it sits in the mid range of the simulated benchmarks, which make it look pretty good, but not necessarily amazing, right? But then when you go and you get into the real world benchmarks like Blender Classroom, it has one of the best performing scores in Blender Classroom on my charts this year. Get into Autodesk 3ds Max, you have a fantastic score at a 191, when one of the best scores out of an i9-12900H, an RTX 3070 Ti, is a 214. That's only a 23 point difference. Looking at Autodesk Maya, the same thing. You look at that M16, you get a 236 out of the G14, and a 279 out of the M16. So again, only about a 30 point difference. Moving on to PTC Creo, it moves up the charts. Falling behind this Slim 7, which has the RX 6800S, this is the 6700S inside of the G14. So it has a higher TDP GPU, but only scores an extra 10 points above it. Again, a fantastic price to performance situation here. And then the most impressive thing of all, in my opinion, is SolidWorks. Now SolidWorks historically has only liked workstation GPUs. That is until these Radeon GPUs came along, these RX 6000 series, and they are doing really well inside of SolidWorks. So if you're looking for the best bang for buck SolidWorks laptop, the G14 definitely has it going for you. Now as we move into Photoshop, we still see a fantastic score at nine. 39. Looking at After Effects, a 795. Great. Now, I mean, I would love it if it was above 800, but at that it's at 795 is still a fantastic score. Now, moving on to video editing. Drop frames out of Premiere Pro at 4K, you'll have zero. At 6K B-Raw, you'll only have 580. And then at red footage, you'll have 3,399. That's actually like fourth place, the best laptop of the year. The best laptop I've seen has scored about 800 drop frames on red footage. So the, it's only behind about 2,000 is actually really good because some laptops this year have been dropping as many as eight to 10,000 drop frames. Now looking at the 4K export out of Premiere Pro, a two minute and 50 second export time, very respectable mid range of the charts. But what's most impressive about this laptop is the 6K B-Raw, which I personally am excited about because that's what I use on a day to day here on my channel. 13 minutes and 52 seconds for the nine minute export. A fantastic export time, one of the best on my channel so far. And then if you're using DaVinci Resolve, it's good. It's not exactly amazing. It gets a six minute and 51 second export time. This wouldn't be my first pick for a DaVinci Resolve laptop, but it is still a good pick nonetheless. Now, battery life is one of my favorite aspects of this laptop. It just packs a punch. You can go for hours while streaming, for hours while doing productivity tasks. You can even get hours worth of video editing and Photoshop work. Now, I did test the battery at all types of different levels, and I would definitely recommend going back and checking out my one month review of this laptop, where I dive into all the different fan modes and the battery life that was associated with it and the performance that was associated with it. I get really in depth, but I will say that for these specific battery life results you were seeing, now I run the laptop on silent and eco mode with the brightness at 35%. Now the keyboard itself is not a completely new redesign, but we now have RGB and better keycaps. Last year they were kind of this plasticky chiclet key cap and I just didn't like it. It felt cheap. And even, you know, with the silver keyboard deck, which we now have the white keyboard deck, it was just it's not the level of premium laptop that I wanted to see. And this year, they really stepped it up. So that's something that's still standing out to me six months later. I still love the keyboard deck. One thing I will point out that is a complete redesign is going to be the amazing large glass trackpad. They've done such a good job fitting a massive trackpad on this laptop, taking every single centimeter possible to give us a nice full trackpad, which to me helped a lot while working on video editing, working in Photoshop, the last year's model with the 5900HS, this trackpad was just so small and the workflow was not as efficient as now that they have this larger trackpad. So that six months later is still standing out to me as a fantastic asset and a reason to choose this year's model. Ryzen 6000 is the first time we're seeing laptops with DDR5 RAM and it ships with good quality DDR5 RAM. There was a few years where laptop manufacturers were shipping cheaper RAM modules in their laptop and it was significantly bottlenecking the machine. That is not the case with the G14. It comes with good quality RAM, it comes with DDR5. The model I have specifically before me is the 16 gig variant 
and it performs very well. Now, if you wanna get more performance, I would upgrade that single DDR5 stick to say a 16 gig stick or a 32 gig stick, and that will increase your performance substantially with playback in Premiere Pro inside of Photoshop, and of course, while you're multitasking. So that would be a great upgrade, but know that the RAM it comes with stock will not bottleneck. They've put a good quality stick in there. If you want more performance, the upgrade path is a good idea. Punch for punch, I cannot imagine getting a better price laptop with better performance than the G14. And like I said, of course, this laptop is constantly on great sales on bestbuy.com and other vendors. So definitely check out the links in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to help us reach 100,000 subscribers by Christmas. I'd be super grateful if you could help us get there. It would be amazing and a dream come true for us on this channel. I'll see you here in the next video.